ourselves nigh, draw ourselves near. Amen. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord God. Let us get in the mindset of praise and worship, Lord God. Let us get in the mindset of gratefulness, Lord God. Oh, I'm so grateful to be here, Lord God. If it weren't for you to rise on the third day, Lord God, where would we be? Oh, God, I don't even want to think about that, Lord Jesus. But where would we be, Lord God, if you didn't make the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, Lord God, we love you. Oh, God, I love you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I love you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We get another chance to worship you, Lord Jesus. We get another chance to worship you, Lord Jesus. Somebody worship him with me right there. So you get another chance to worship him. Clap your hands. Clap your hands right there. Avail yourself. We're here. We're here in the house of the Lord. We're here. Avail yourself. Raise your hands if you need to. Stand if you need to. Help me invite the spirit of the Lord here today. Help me invite the spirit of the Lord here today. We love you, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord. When I don't know what to do, Lord God, you give me peace, Lord God. When I'm all over the place, Lord God, you give me peace, Lord God. I'm so thankful, 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 Lord God. You have the power to do anything, Lord God. You have the power to, to do anything, Lord God. You defeated death, Lord Jesus. And for this, we're thankful. And for this, we're grateful, Lord God. And for this, we'll give you praise. And for this, we'll give you praise. Oh, God, we love you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Oh, this, oh God, thank you, Lord God. There's not enough time in the day to say how much, how much I thank you, Lord God. There's not enough time in the day to say how much, Lord, we need you, Lord God. Oh, God, bless us. Bless our families. Keep our families together, Lord God. The stronger unit in the, in the world is a family, Lord God. Keep our families together, oh, God. Oh, God, keep, our, keep, our, keep us held up, Lord God. Keep us held up, Lord God. These times aren't easy, Lord Jesus. When we don't know where to go, Lord God, have our back, Lord God. Have our backs, Lord God. Remind us daily, Lord God, that just you, it is you that can do anything, Lord God. Oh, God, we love you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. This is our chance to worship. This is our chance to invite him into this place. Let's take one more minute. Let's take one more minute. Clap your hands. Say what you got to say. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Say hallelujah. 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 It's your chance right there. Let's invite him. Let's get him here. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're so welcome, Lord God. You're so welcome, Lord God. And Lord God, we ask, we ask a couple things from this service today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I ask that you just allow our hearts to be open, Lord God, for us to receive something from you. God, you have a word for us, Lord God. Even if it's a reminder that of something we already know, Lord God, you have a word for us, Lord God. Let us take that word and let us take heed, Lord Jesus. Have our hearts open to you, Lord God. And lastly, Lord God, I ask that you give us just traveling mercies and give us two some of us are already here, Lord God. Some of us are on our way to and from here, Lord God. Give us traveling mercies, Lord God. This is a great day, Lord God. This is a, a day we celebrate, Lord God. We get happy, Lord God. We celebrate, Lord God. We get happy, Lord God. We put on our best clothes. We're looking good for you, Lord Jesus. So visit us, Lord God. Give us traveling mercies, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for anyone who's on their way, Lord God, for anyone on, online, Lord God. Just, just give us peace for this day, Lord Jesus. Give us a peace, Lord God. We need peace, Lord God. We need peace, Lord God. Lord God, so we won't be so guarded and we can do your work, Lord God. Give us peace. Give us peace, Lord God. Because once we get the liberty, once we get the freedom, we can do anything, Lord God. We can do anything, Lord God. Give us peace, Lord God. Settle our hearts first, Lord Jesus. We ask all these things, Lord God. We ask all these things. 
In Jesus' name, amen. And clap your hands with me as we invite the worship team up. Worship, we, we're going to try to invite the Lord. Or we are going to invite the Lord in. If you can, stand with them and, and worship with them. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Let's give God praise. Let's give God honor. Let's give him thanks for who he is. He's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. He's the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Sometimes we got to change our atmosphere in our life and change our atmosphere inside the church so we can worship God and not think about everything else that's happening on the outside. So what I do is I invite you to worship with me, with us. Even right now, just raising your hand or just opening up your mouth and giving God all the glory. Sometimes we gotta use our mouth. Come on, let's start using it. Let's start changing. Let's start using that mouth. Speak unto God what you wanna say to him. Everybody has a different praise. Thank you, Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hosanna in the high. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, Santa. Oh, Let our praise be lifted up, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest, let our praise be lifted up, Hosanna. Everybody say Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah. In the highest. Come on, everybody say, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest, in the Higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Come on, say higher, be lifted, be lifted higher, yes, God, Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be 
lifted higher. Come on, everybody, lift your voice in this place. Oh, higher. higher Jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher everybody say Jesus you be lifted higher 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 be lifted higher Jesus you be lifted higher, 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 be lifted higher. Come on, open up your mouth and give God worship. Come on, open up your mouth and give God praise. Come on, open it up, 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 hallelujah. Be lifted higher. Jesus, 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 be lifted higher, higher. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. My soul cries out, thank you, Jesus. Woo. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what a Savior. He is wonderful. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him. He is the Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Yes, Christ is risen. Say, oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, bow down before him, cause he's Lord of all, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, yeah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior, oh, what a What a savior, oh what a savior, yes God, he is wonderful, sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is, Christ is risen, bow down before him, bow down before him, for he is Lord. Christ. 
come to the altar. Our Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Oh, come, oh, come to the altar. The, uh, our Father's arms are open wide. Father's arms are open. Forgiveness was bought with bought with the precious blood, precious blood of Jesus. Oh, come, oh, come to the altar, the altar, the Father's arms, Father's arms are open. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood. Oh, come, oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought. risen come on if you know he's risen come on come on we can always still give God a praise and a worship Ooh. we just thank God he rose again <laughs> Ooh. he's not dead Don't weep. He's not asleep. Cause he's not dead. Oh, 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 oh. don't cry. And why your eyes? He's not dead. Why do you? Why are 
are you weeping? He's not dead. Why do you cry? Wipe your eyes. He's not
Can you put your hand together for the Lord this morning? Come on, come on. Come on, put your hands, put your, put your worship together. Put your worship, come on, worship it. Come on, worship it. Come on, worship it. Thank you, come on. No, no, don't just clap. Come on, worship, come on, worship. Come on, worship, come on, worship. Thank you, Lord. Listen, why are you, why you're in here, I want everyone to stand if you're able to stand. I want you to stand. If you're able to stand, if you're able to stand, and I want you to do me a favor. I'm from the South, and so we like to get to know each other. And so I want you to take a moment to come from behind the chair and go learn somebody. Go get to know somebody. Come on, come on, go. Come on, come on. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Amen. Talk to somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful job. Wonderful, wonderful. Are you, come, you coming back? Come on, get to know someone. Father, we bless you. Bless you to be in your house. Bless you to be in your house. Father, we bless you to be in your house. Thank you for being alive, God. Thank you for being alive, God. Thank you for a right mind, God. Thank you for a right mind. We are so blessed. So blessed. Wonderful worship. Wonderful worship. Amen. Wonderful worship. Good Friday was great. They call it Good Friday. We call it Great Friday. Amen. Pastor Easley prayed and preached on that day. Amen. And thank God some of us have been here since 5 in the morning. Thank God for this morning. Minister Norma did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. And we're so grateful. Just before y'all hear that little noise, that's the pool. Y'all keep praying for the carpet people. Amen. Because they're the one holding up. We got our glass and everything ready, but we, we've been held up by them. Uh, but I'm going to have to make somebody uncomfortable in a minute. Amen. And so we're grateful this morning. But before we, we're going to hear the children this morning sing. Amen. Amen. I, I told them to put the communion table on, but I think we're going to have to move that for a minute. Not now, but soon. Amen. Thank you, Deacon, on this job, but we're going to have to move that because the kids come. But before we do that, I want you guys to meet a friend of mine, a guest. Amen. She's a friend of mine. She's here all the way from, amen, a city in America. And I'll leave that private, but we're grateful. Amen. She's visiting us today. We do some... Um, I want to be discreet of what we, we communicate on some business opportunities. Let's just leave it that way. Amen. You never know who God has around you. Amen. Uh, and so I'm grateful. Inez, I'm going to put you on the spot. If, but I'm gonna, you have to come up here. Amen. I'm going to put you on the spot. Come say hello. <laughs> this is my friend, everybody. This is the Inez. And do you know something? Um. When the First Lady passed away, 
she and uh, uh, Sister Old Me drove all the way. She lives in what, Sacramento, I think it is. But I won't tell them where you live, but amen. Uh, you do it. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. And she drove all the way down here. Uh, I, we've only communicated for the last number of years uh, on this particular project we're working on, uh, a number of us. And, and she drove down when Sister Johnson passed away. She drove down. And I appreciate that. Amen. So, and she was kind to be a blessing to us. And so I have to make sure that you get your blessing before you leave today. Cause I, amen. Because she recently experienced something similar to us. Although it was my wife, she experienced through her sister. Amen. So can y'all greet my guest in Jesus' name? My friend, not my guest, my friend. Amen. That's my daughter. Love your singing. Praise the Lord, everyone. Just want to let you know that when God tells you to do something, you do it, right? And I had, and I uh, had to ask God for for his, for his forgiveness because God has been talking to me about coming to visit you guys, and I didn't do it right away. And so I know, I know, I got you. But uh, when God told me to come this time, I was on a fishing trip. And I do go fishing, okay? But. Um, but he had me to come here. You know, it's, today's my birthday as well. And so, thank you. I am happy to come and celebrate that time with you all. But when God tells you to do something, just do it. And I am so happy to be in the house of God again with, you know, you guys are not strangers. Your family. Your brothers and sisters that I've never met before. But I thank God. My daughter's in the back. She's my driver. You guys, uh, I don't drive all by myself. I can't do it anymore like I used to. But... I just thank God for Bishop, man. I thank God for Bishop. Uh, like he says, we're doing some things together. But, you know, um, Bishop, I honor you, you know. And so, um, you know, I, I'm just so happy to be here today. So I'm coming to praise God with you guys. So if I lift up my hand and say hallelujah with you, I'm, we're going to hallelujah together, okay? God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I didn't know that was your daughter. Amen. I know she... Uh, we're all doing something together. I'm going to leave it at that. Amen. Uh, it's, it's important. So I'm so grateful for, for her. Um, there are going to be, um, I want to say this humbly, but I'm going to, by God's grace, expand our exposure of people. Okay, some of you got it, so let's see what else. Some of you, you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. That is to move all these weird places just because you want a home. Okay, I'll talk maybe over here. Because, see, I preach the gospel, but we got to help you live. I think I need to stay on this side. We got to help you live. And I've always, I've shared with you that whole foolishness about money and wealth and all that, the way it's taught and that prosperity gospel, I'm not familiar with it. And I don't want no association, my name tied to it. But I do know I, I want a roof over my head. Amen. 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 I, I want my life that when I start moving up, I put things in order. That's kind of, she just... Can I tell them your academic achievements? Okay. Yeah, she's so grateful. She just finished, uh, if I'm correct. I know she's close to finishing. If she hasn't already, already finished. And she just received her master's degree. I'm not sure what's it. Is it a doctorate? Ten months ago? Yeah, but she's going, to, she's going after her master's degree. And uh, the quality of people in that conversation that we have is very um, interesting. But sometimes God has to let you experience something. And when you experience, you say, now, who can I bless? Who can I help? When I lost everything and I didn't have a roof over my head, eventually someone had to reach down and pull me up. And once they pulled me up and someone said, well, how did you learn that? I said, I learned it because I never want to experience that again. But my experience was based on ignorance. You know, young, I didn't, nobody taught me that. But once they taught me now, amen, like the last three or four days, how busy I've been dealing with things, 
Um, because God wants us to live better. He wants you to get married and they'll be thinking about a divorce. Okay, I really got to talk to this side. He wants you, even if you're mad, say amen. <laughs> even if you're having struggles, say amen. <laughs> and, and even if you're not married, come on to the altar. Let's pray right now. Uh, you you want to be with someone where you're on the same page. Amen. And so, I want my children to have a better life. That's why I do the planning I do. I, I'm not into material stuff. I mean, literally, I was at the store, and I said, God, I really want to get a piano. I want a piano. I want to get back to playing like I used to play. And then all of a sudden, guess what? I'm going to the mall to get something for the church. And what did I see? This guy selling all these pianos. This must be a sign from God. And when he told me the price, I said, no, I want to pay for it. Man, I was just about to pay for that thing. And, uh, and then he said, well, name your price. Well, you don't tell me to name my price because I went down 50-some percent. He said, now, come on, be real now, Pastor, be real. I said, I'm real. You told me to name my price. <laughs> I didn't say you had to agree with it. I just said I named it. But the point is, I decided, no, I'm not going to get it. I want it, but I'm not going to get it. It's probably more important for me to change my front door and some other stuff and invest in my property. Do you understand what I just did? Just because I want something doesn't mean it's always the most prudent thing for me to do. Come on, tell, tell somebody, did you get that lesson? Did you get that lesson? I like that blue. Amen. Amen. Y'all didn't give me the, the memo when it's blue today, but that's all right. And so uh, I want your life to be better. And it's people like her that we're going to bring in. I mentioned it to the attorney this week. I mentioned it to my fiduciary. I said, listen, I want you to come. I want you to meet the people, and I want you to help God's people. And they all said, just let us know. We'll come. We'll come. Because sometimes our affiliations you know, can help God's people. If I think someone can't help, listen, if I don't do nothing with you, then I'm not going to introduce you to anybody else. But if I think I can help you, sister, if I think I can help you, I don't want nothing in return. I have no motives. I have no motives. I just know what it's like to be thou. And when God bring you up, don't worry, that's, that's the water leveling off. That's called technology. Amen. So getting saved today, that's what it means. I mean, I mean, hurry up. And so I just want you to know, just before we move forward, I'm going to look at people like I'm like bringing with her and others to for you that are hungry for a better life. I just need to know who you are. Now I'm standing. You, you better raise your hand. <laughs> your wife looking at you right now. Amen. I'm messing with him. Y'all don't know. He's a father now. Amen. He's just had his, his father. He's, he's got kids now. Welcome to the legally broke. Welcome. Amen. Justifiably broke. That's what's in your pocket. It, you know, somehow the house become a magician. The moment you put money in the pocket, it's gone. But I appreciate a man that will take care of his responsibilities. And pay his bills. Hello, somebody. See, you can talk about Jesus in life, too, now. And so before we get into the word, I'm, I think we're going to have the kids come up here. I want to put them on center stage. Let's not move that. Uh, Justin, can you come help us? And let's put this over there. Brothers and sisters, I want to introduce you to one of the, the best choirs in the world. Amen. Amen. Even... Some of our members, some of some of our choir team members, as they're coming, some of them already are experiencing some tremendous academic uh, academic accolades. They're doing so wonderful. So I want you to receive the new developed <laughs> Pasadena Children's Choir. Come on, you that are watching on social media, come on, receive our babies. Come on, give them a standing ovation. Come on. 
Amen. All the way up. Amen, amen. Amen. Give one more hand clap for these beautiful children. Amen. Don't be shy. Step up, step up, step up. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Come, come up a little closer so we can see you guys. Come on up. Come on up. Smile, smile, smile. How many of us know God is not dead? Amen. How many of us know God is not dead? Oh, man. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, the kids are here to go ahead and tell us and just reiterate that, that God's not dead. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. One second. Hold on one second. When we started our practice, we warmed up. You guys want to warm up? Show them our warm ups? No? Go right into it, huh? He said, no. All right. Well, let's go right into it then. All right. Um, so we know that when God's not dead, he's still alive. Amen. And then we know that we can fill him in our hands. We can fill him in our feet. We can fill him in the air. We can fill him everywhere. We can fill him in the church. We can fill him in the street because I know he's living in me. Amen. You guys ready? This song's really easy if she, if she were like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, next time, Coco. You guys ready? All right. One, two, three, four. God's not dead. Come on, guys. God's not dead. He is alive. 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 And I know. All right. We're going to say we can feel him. We can feel I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him in the air. I can feel him everywhere. I can feel him in the church. I can feel him in the and I know he's living in me. Da, 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 da. So God's not dead. No. He is a come on, guys, God's not dead. What else, guys? God's not dead. No, he is alive. And I know. Break it down real quick. All right. So we have a the good thing about what we're learning here is we're learning that we feel God here, but we also feel him in the streets, right? So we're gonna take him the streets with us, right? But one thing is we have to have a testimony. We have to have something, hey, you know, God's living in me. He gives me joy every day, amen. Something a child can say, all right? All right, who's first? Jarrell, you first? You're first, Jarrell? Did, did, did you want to say how the Lord was living in you? No? Come on, it's okay. What we, what we practice, what you practice? You're... You don't want to? All right, all right. We're going to say God's not dead then. Let's go. One, two, three, four. God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. He is alive and I know. They said we can feel him, all right? I can feel him in my hands. And I know he's living in me. Da -da. All right. Hey, let's go. Woo! So Jason's ready to let us know why the Lord is living in him. I got back to my name. Is Jason Taylor. I got baptized on February 11th, 2024. Instantly, I felt protected. He said he got baptized on February 11th, 2024. Have him celebrate. Come on. God's not dead. No. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not He is alive. And I know he's. I can feel him in my hands. Come on. And I know he's living in me. 
One more hand clap for our littles. Yay! Come on, guys. Great job. Great job. Come on. We're finished. Come on. Amen. Good they job. deserve a, Come on, guys. a big praise. Woo! A big praise. Amen, amen, amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And so we're grateful for their debut. And so if you want your kids involved, amen. Um, we're grateful on next week begins our, our uh, discipleship university. Uh, we're grateful. Amen. Who recently got baptized here? If you can stand. Uh, all right. If you recently got baptized, come here and introduce yourself. Come here. Come here. Amen. Uh, amen. Now, now, this young man right here is, you don't play with him on the football field. I, come on, stand right here, sweetheart. Come on. Come on, just stand up here. Stand up here. These are the ones recently got baptized. Do y'all notice something that's taking place? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God's not dead. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we're going to start here. They're just going to give their first and last name. Amen. And then we're going to hear from them, and then we're going to celebrate with them. But the Lord is into children, regardless of what this wicked world is doing. Amen. That's an engineer right there with that blue sweater on, y'all. She's going to be an engineer. Oh, yeah. But, but I, I think she's cutting herself short. I think she can, amen, be an astronaut. That's what I think. Amen. All right, that's what I believe, Joe. I, I think she can do better than that. Amen. Because she's real smart. Come on, receive them as they introduce themselves. Oh, you got the mic. Good. Introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. My name is Jenny. Um, I'm 18 years old. And, <laughs> and I'm honored to be here. Amen. Amen. Kitchen. My name is Leonard Kitchen. Uh, I was baptized in the name of Christ, and I, and that baptized was very good for me. My name is Jason Taylor. I am nine years old, and I got baptized to um, have a relationship with God. My name is Jarrell Jr. Jarrell Taylor. I got baptized February 11. I got baptized to be closer to God. So I'm Christopher Powell. I'm 12, and I was baptized for the remission of my sins. is Darrell Bodie. I got baptized to be closer to God. Now, let's give God a great big praise. Is there anyone else? My goodness. Come on. Give God a praise for children giving their life to God. Wonderful. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We're grateful. We're grateful because of what God is doing. And 
we're going to get the funds to build the uh, this will be a building going to be built in the back it'll be a multi-purpose room but it's going to be where we're going to pour some serious we're going to put the money out there for education for our young people all right i'll talk to this side now amen we got to invest in people amen that is that is our brand that is our commitment to invest in people amen the church has to when i say church i'm this is not the church this is called a building it's not the church i don't go to church when i show up i am the church amen we are the church tell somebody we are the church Amen. We don't go to church. We are the church. We go to service. We worship service. And so, brothers and sisters, what you see is when you start investing in people, you'll see it. I said, don't, don't worry about filling the pews. That's the least of your thoughts. What you're worried about is how are you impacting the life? How are you impacting people? Now, for all those years, you know, when you go through some, say, so listen, man, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay still. My father, I shared it many times, and you guys already know what I'm about to say. He told us simply, don't get so high. <laughs> when things are going good, don't get up there. And when things are going bad, don't, don't get to, so not too high, not too low, even kill. And you'll make it through. Amen. And so we bless God and we thank God. Again, I do thank you again, Ines, you and your daughter for showing up. And amen. Good to see you. Good to see you. And did you bring any fish? You did. Thank you, Jesus. He knew I, you, I was going to get some wild salmon today. But amen. Um, do I have you? Does it look like I have you? <laughs> but we bless. Listen, we're just having some fun. We're not going to keep you long today. We're going to do communion today. Amen. We're going to search your heart. We're going. I'm, one thing I want to know is balance. I don't want no extreme. I'm not into extreme stuff. You know, I'm not going to be way. Oh, we got no, it ain't all about the church. You know, sometimes it's, I got to help me. I need help. Sometimes I need, a, I'm a pastor. I, I Sure, I got the title of bishop. I got a lot of titles. But sometimes I still, somebody say, hey, good job. Thank you for doing a good job. Amen. Sometimes you just need to know that you're doing your job right. Uh, yeah, as we learned that many times people take, they go out of their way, and they really take their time to tell you how bad you are. Uh, you know, but we know, amen, you've got to encourage people. Now, that young lady that stood here, y'all don't know, she's a singer. You don't know those young men how smart they are. We got some smart young people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll talk to the middle now, I guess. <laughs> amen. But if you've got to do what Jesus did. He invested in people. Amen. Jesus came and started dealing with people and their practical issues. Did y'all know that? <laughs> I just need to eat. So Jesus gave him some food. The one thing Jesus didn't do, give him a job. You got to go get a job. I fed you, but you got to go back to work. Can you imagine God came to the earth that he created and he had a job? Okay, y'all. He was a carpenter. <laughs> Can you believe that God, the one that created the earth, put himself in some flesh, came down on the earth and gave himself a job? That's in addition to salvation. This was for him dealing with, amen, life itself. He was a carpenter. And God let us know we've got to be busy. As, as one person was asking one time, you know, you give him some. Oh, thank you so much. And that's fine. Yeah, I said, but you need to do something with yourself. You need to help yourself get better. And yesterday, this lady was, was raining where I live, and I was going to the cleaners, cleaner and somewhere else. And Well, it really made me cleaner and going home. And, and I saw this lady just sitting on the ground, and it was raining, and she was sitting under the, the covering, and people walking by her. And I said, you know what? I don't usually don't eat until after 12, but this morning I'm going to go over and get me something. I said, but you know, God, how can I eat knowing she's outside and she didn't eat yet? Do y'all hear me? And sometimes God's going to use your natural eyes to see a natural need. That's when God comes alive. 
Not when you're screaming and hollering, shouting and doing all that. It's when you go out there and just do something nice to somebody. And they see the love of God in you. Amen. I'm ready for the word. Are you ready for the word? Amen. I'm ready for the word. Get your Bible. Now here, uh, because we have such a strong commitment to education. Amen. Um, and I mean biblical education is what I'm referring to now. Biblical education. Amen. Now, if you do not have a Bible, look in front of you under the seat in front of you. Maybe a Bible. If not in front of you, look. Ask the person behind you. Is that extra Bible? You want your own Bible. You don't want a Bible share. You want your own Bible. Amen. Because you want to learn the Bible. Now, I'm not going to be your typical hooper. Uh, I can hoop if I want to, but I believe in laying what's called a substratum, the foundation. Now, what does the word substratum mean? It means foundation. Now, what does the word substratum mean? What does the word substratum mean? Now, when you leave today, you can use that word. It simply means your foundation. You ever watch people, they make all this money and get broke? You ever seen that before? You seen these rappers and these celebrities or whomever, they get all this money, and then all of a sudden, they're broke. You know why? They had no foundation. They got it quick, and it was gone. Doesn't mean they're bad people. A lot of them probably just wonderful, beautiful individuals, but no one took the time. And in our culture, brothers and sisters, let's be honest, in our culture, what we do not do is train our next generation. We're negligent in that area of training the next generation. Okay, I'm going to say it to this side. We're negligent. Amen. And we have to stop putting our kids' future and our future in the hands of people that don't like us. I mean, why I'm going to trust you, you don't even love me. You don't care about me. Why I'm going to fatten your pocket. No, we, we, you're talking about awoke. <laughs> we are awake. We, we see what you're doing. And we're going to empower our people to help themselves. How many of you look, say, at, at some point in my life, I would like a home? Okay, see, you wave your hand. You didn't convince me. I mean, do you really say, one day I want to own a home? <laughs> say, uh, now you're convincing me. But there are some practical things in life you have to do. You should never chase a man to get to, to, to. The man ain't looking for no girlfriend. I mean, at some point, men, we run kind of slow. You guys grow faster than us here. Okay, you go faster. But at some point, brothers and sisters, at some point, men wake up. And they say, you know what, I'm tired of the girlfriend stuff. See, a Leo, I look at Leo, beautiful young lady with the blue sweater on, right? See, that's going to be marriage material. I thought we'll say it a little bit louder than now. See, that, that's, that's marriage material. And your baby, too, she's going to be back to that beautiful young lady with that beautiful dress. She's going to be, she, and she got baptized already in Jesus' name. She's marriage material. I mean, some of y'all sisters might want to say, you know what? I'm marriage material. Yeah. See, when you come to Jesus, Jesus introduces you to standards. And he also introduces us to boundaries. And we've made the gospel where we become motivational speakers and forgot the whole reason that one day you're going to close your natural eyes. And everything you depended on is gone. Then what are you going to do? And that's why we didn't come because they call it a certain thing. We came because we respect God. And we believe in this God that everybody say doesn't exist. See, if the devil didn't exist, then you don't need to do all those hand signals. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. All those little hand signals. If he didn't exist, why well, you got to do it? That makes you look stupid. 
but I thought you were smart. But if you're smart, then he must exist to you. The devil must exist to you. Well, see, Jesus exists to us. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be super spiritual. Amen. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not trying to win friends and influence people. I'm trying to save my people, save the people. That's our job. So the gospel in Luke chapter number 24, if you don't mind standing as we read, just one, one scripture. The gospel of Luke chapter number 24, verse 6 and verse 7. And then at the end, we're going to have communion and a good celebration as we dismiss. And maybe somebody will be baptized like these children in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 6 and verse number 7. Actually, I'm going to start at verse number 1 so we get the whole picture. Amen. So where are we, everybody? What book? What book are we in, first of all? Luke, the Gospel of Luke. What chapter are we in? And we're going to read verse 1 through 6, 1 through 7. What verses are we going to read? Okay, now you that are watching on live on social media, I want to tell you, don't feel embarrassed if you don't know where the books of the Bibles are. Never feel embarrassed here. What you do is go to the front of your Bible to what's called the table of contents, amen, and find the gospel. It'll say Luke, amen, St. Luke, sometimes St. Luke, amen, but Luke. And when you find Luke, now you know where the book is at. Never feel embarrassed Amen. We want to break it down so everyone can enjoy and everyone can find. And if you're here in the building, amen, you are encouraged to use your own Bible. But I want to encourage everyone, if you have the ability to stand, please stand. Young and old, please stand. Now, beginning at verse number one, now upon, uh, uh, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered the inn and found not the body of the Lord. And it came to pass, as they were uh, much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garment. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? And verse number six, it says, And he is not here, but he is risen. Remember, how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Amen. And on the third day, he got up. So, God, we bless you and thank you this morning for your word, that your people receive your word. We give you praise and honor for your word, God. Your word is real, it's life-changing, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You may be seated, you may be seated. And here we encourage you to take what we say is copious notes, a lot of notes. Take some notes, amen. Get out a notepad, amen. We encourage everyone to get out a pencil, even the kids, amen, because we do have a quiz at the end of the sermon. Amen. We learned that this morning from Minister Norma. We got to, amen. And so, again, everybody, we want to, uh, and, and I want the children to bear with me. I got a story for you in here, too. But know, know this, that I'm working hard to get you a building. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to the middle group again. Amen. We working hard, amen, and sagaciously to get this building for our kids in addition to the, what is that thing called, Jungle Gym or whatever over there, amen, and probably going to get another basketball goal so I don't have to hurt these guys feeling so much, amen. Actually, I know he's looking at me like, what? Because <laughs> he's very good. I watch him, amen, and I didn't know Elliot could shoot that well either. Boy, he can shoot pretty good. Uh, but what I'm saying, I want to make this not just a Sunday thing but a life thing. Amen. Where your life is definitely improved. Pray. There's a building on this street I'm looking at. Y'all keep praying with me. I'm praying, saying, Lord, help me to find someone to help fund this because I want a school. I want to take back everything they stole from us. I'm going to talk to this group over here. I want to take back everything. 
And this is why I say, God, help me to get the right people around me. Just like my sister that came today. Lord, put me around the right people to make the right decisions to pull our people up. Amen. Amen. That we, we don't, we're not going to complain about the color of our skin and, and the man is out for me. We don't believe in any of that hogwash. Amen. We make no excuses. Amen. Hallelujah. When I struggled as a kid and I couldn't read, I didn't make no excuses. I went to go get some help. Amen. As a result, I was able to write books. But I couldn't. I didn't even know nothing about no phonics. No one never told me. Because where I lived, it wasn't like that. But I had to push myself. Even as a little kid, I had to learn. I watched. What does that mean? How come they live over there and we live over here? I would ask my dad, why do they live over there? Well, I think, God, see, we live right in the middle, but why do they live over there? And I remember when we was young, we moved from one city to another city. And when we moved, we moved from the hood. And we moved in something called Lake Blue States. And we stayed there for about six months until my father had a house built. And when we got over there, it's almost like people didn't want to talk to you because you thought that you was something. Well, I'm not from here. I can't think of something. I don't know where anything else around here. And I wanted to go back to where I came from because we get adjusted to what we used to. So today I want to talk to you about the day life defeated death. We're talking about some victory now. The day life defeated death. And so when we come to the story, many of us, when we look at the Bible, we read the Bible, we read the story, and we think this is all about Easter, and that is not true. That is a pagan God. You need to know that it's a pagan God. Now, of course, we're not going to deny kids, and we're not going to, you know, burst a bubble on things. We're not like that. We're not mean people. That, in fact, we got a gift for all the kids that the saints paid for. We, we got some for every child. All that we want is a full life. Come on, somebody, write that down. Say, God, we just want a full life. Come on, or don't just write it down on your sheet. I want a full life. I don't just want one part. I want a full. I want health. I want my. I want to be happy. I want my spirit to be right. I want to have a good husband. I want a good wife. I want to have great parents. I want to have great children. I want to have. Amen. I, I. I never knew that I'd be a grandfather. Amen. But I'm a grandfather, and I'm. I'm proud of it. And and I took care of business this week for family stuff by myself because I'm just fulfilling what me and first lady been talking about. I'm not changing the plan. Amen, somebody. And so we want to talk about the day life defeated death. Because death has lost its power. <laughs> Amen, somebody. It's lost its power. Just because a person passed away don't mean they lose. Because to be absent from this body. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but it bothers me driving up the street seeing people sleeping on the street. That bothers me. Amen. It bothers me to see that and just, you know, if God has blessed me, I've got to be able to help somebody do something. And that's what we learn about the character of Jesus. He wasn't worried about what car I'll drive. He wasn't worried about any of that. He did promise me my raiment, which means, what does it mean by raiment? Your needs. He promised to take care of my needs. But if he give me a check to pay my rent, amen, I shouldn't go party. And then come back and say, Lord, bless me again. See, we've been trained to be, be people that get handouts. And see, until you confess to yourself and accept responsibility about your life, it doesn't get better. It wasn't until I, brother, it wasn't until I accept responsibility that it was me blowing my life. It wasn't the devil, it wasn't the man. Well, you know, they're taking everything, anybody taking nothing from me. I gave it away like a fool. And you know what? I want it back. And I want it with some interest. But I got to deal that there's no one that can change me but Jesus. But I must agree with the change. 
And so the problem we see, the, or not the problem, but the thing we see in the Bible, we come with, oh, give us a great sermon. I'm sorry, I don't have any. I speak life. That's all I want to talk about is life. And I'm going to talk about the day death got defeated. It thinks it's winning. And it is losing. One day I won't be here. One day I'm going to leave the earth if the Lord should tarry. And I've got to give an account to my life to God. Because there is something called, if I can use this term, my heavenly report card. Amen, somebody, y'all. I hope you wrote that down. I want to say, Lord, what kind of grade am I getting as a believer? What's my grade, Lord? Hallelujah. What's my grade, Jesus? And so when we look at this story, it all began not on earth but in heaven where there was a spirit that uh, there was a, an angel that was created that God gave him the ability to worship. He led worship. But unfortunately, as he led, and his name was called Lucifer. Lucifer was not a bad name, but the world has taken that name and made it like it was bad. But God created it. It was an angel God created, amen, that started out good. But when opportunity came, this angel decided that I'm going to be like him. Now, that's the creature getting jealous of the creator. This is a battle that had nothing to do with us, but he caused problems up there. And he saw him himself and said, I could be just like him. In fact, I can be better like him. I want to have a throne like him. That's called pride. Because of his arrogance. And what you're seeing even on the news. And these people falling. That we lifted up. They were never your God. Why are you praising them and you can't pay their bill and they ride around in Rolls Royce? Something wrong with that thinking. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Something wrong with that thinking. I ain't praising no man. I, you know, I encourage you, but you ain't my God. You cannot deal with the issues I'm dealing with right now. I need a real God. I don't need no pretending God. I don't need no God that's in elementary school. I need one that wrote the book. And the devil saw opportunity and was at some point, he became prideful. And once he became prideful, he went behind God's back and spoke to another set of eight, some other angels. What you think about it? We could be just like God. <laughs> or whatever he said. And he's got a third of them to agree with him. No problem. God kicked them out. Came on the earth, start causing problems down here. You know what? I'm going to get back at God. I'm going to attack the women. That woman that's down there. I'm going to get her. And she, he talked to her and talked to her and talked to her. Sisters, y'all trying to hear, you hear what I'm saying, but I'm not saying. To get you to say yes, I had to talk to you and talk to you. Y'all not, okay, I'll talk to this side there. Y'all do know what I'm trying to say. You know what, what they want. So they keep talking to you and talking to you and talking to you. You say, never mind. Okay, bam, he's won. Once they get what they want, they're gone. You think, oh, we're supposed to be in love. Love, nothing. You just, it's another one on the, on the chain, honey. And so the devil, that's how he treats us. He comes to us and he baits us. And you find out what you and I like, what motivates us, what's our hot button. In, in business, they, they say they look for what's called buying triggers in business. If you've done any um, 
marketing, anything in, in college or school, the buying, tr you look at what makes you buy things. Okay, why did so-and-so use orange instead of using green? So if you use blue, people are a little bit more calm. They don't spend. But something about red brings some sense of excitement. But they say, now when you think about black, it's about power. They know that. They understand colors work, but they know orange gets you motivated. That's why some of them, their brand is orange, because they know you're going to spend money. And the devil know what people like, because he watches them. And these other spirits, they watching to see what triggers you. And that's how the devil calls chaos. He looks for her weakness. What do you really like? What kind of, I want a man do this, man to do that. How about you be a woman first? How about you improve you first? I, I want a woman to do this, that. Well, brother, how about you get a job first? How about you save your money and clean up your 400 FICO score? Y'all didn't hear that one. Okay, I'll bump him up, 520. Don't you deal with you? You know, it's the man that's doing it. No, it ain't the man. It was you that went to the liquor store, took your money out of your savings account that actually belonged to your kids' tuition. And you went and bought that stuff. But it's the man. What man? As if the man got all day to pay attention to you. This is how the devil works. And he caused all this chaos and come on the earth. And then he caused this woman to talk to her husband, amen, and, and lied on God and then had her eat a fruit. The Bible never said an apple. Ate the fruit, and when she ate the fruit, all of a sudden, the chaos that was in the devil got in the woman, and she gave it to the man, and now the family is jacked up. That's how we get to where we are today. Long road, but the same chaos the devil caused in heaven. So God stripped of him his name, stripped him of his name, Lucifer, and just called him Satan. And if you don't think Satan is real, watch TV. It's everywhere. Oh, that ain't for real. If it ain't for real, either you're the stupidest person I've ever seen or it's real. Why would you do something that ain't got no meaning to it? What do you think, we stupid? No, God has not given that spirit, nor that mindset. God, when he gave us the Holy Spirit, he woke us up and told us how much power we have to resist this joker. That's why we get baptized. That's why the water's there. It's to say, I'm tired of that old person who keeps on failing in life. And the devil brought all this chaos. But thank God, Jesus, in John 11, 25, 26, Jesus said unto the woman, he said, listen, I am the resurrection of life. Whosoever believed in me, though he were dead, he is coming alive. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. He was not talking about natural death, but spiritual death. I don't know about you, but I don't want to leave this natural world and open my eyes and be in hell. And live in a life saying hell don't exist. And find out it does exist. Well, I don't know. God, no, I lo he loves you. Too late now, baby. When they close the door... Amen. I've never been locked up, but I'm sure when they close that door, you are like, oh, God, I really, I'm arrested and I'm in jail. And I'm sure there's a lot of folks in hell saying, I wish I never would have listened to my friends. And so this is what happens. But God had a plan to redeem people that didn't even know where they were going. I hope y'all hear me this morning. And this is why in 1 Corinthians 15, you that are watching, you see it on the screen. 1 Corinthians 15, you can write it down, verse 16, I mean 26 through 27, and verses 54 through 57. He says the last enemy is going to be destroyed. It's going to be death. 
The last enemy going to be destroyed is death. When you say the last enemy, that lets you know there's some preceding him. There's other enemies we got to deal with while we are still on this earth. But he said, for God has put all things in subjection under his feet. When it said all things are put into subjection, it is plain that he accepted who put all things subject unto him. Meaning God put his foot on it and said, I own it. You can have them, but you can't have my children. No, oh, Lord, have mercy. God is protecting his children in spite of what the devil is doing, even with those that don't believe he exists. If he didn't exist, you didn't have to dress up in all that red and put horns on your head then. Where does that stuff come from? You didn't just make it up. You're not brilliant. You've influenced but oh, Jesus, make a way of escape out of stuff. I don't even know where I was headed to before I knew him, the lifestyle I had. I didn't do any violence. I just carried out some violence. I didn't practice it, but I carried it out. Knew nothing about being a thug and doing any crazy stuff like that but I knew if you touch my sister you need to be dealt with and there was no mercy in there y'all understand what I just said without saying it there was no mercy you get what you get today is your day how do you want it it is going to hurt you got half of the city as your family you know you're in trouble they come, we come deep. But see, that's not who we are in Christ. He delivered us from this stuff. I was listening and reading the story. I thought maybe it'd be good to hear. Sometimes we have a problem and don't pay attention that life decisions have consequences. So I read the story about this young woman who disobeyed her parents. And unfortunately, things took a dark turn for the worse. Now, the author is Jessica. I didn't get her last name, but I want to make sure that, um, to the best of my ability, give the credit. And it's like this. It say, once there was a young woman who had an argument with her parents. Her friends was going to this party, and she wanted to go also. However, her parents was very protective and said no. Some of us know what that's like. The girl got so furious at her parents that she ran in the room and she slammed the door, amen, and she had no intention of listening, listening to her parents. So what did she do? She closed the door, she got dressed, and she sneaked out the house. And so she rushed to that party, and unfortunately she met this gentleman who was a little older than her. But she got attracted, more attracted to this young man as he began to talk more and more. And she was laughing and having a great time. And eventually the guy came to her and said, hey, you know what, there's another party going on. You want to go? And she agreed happily. But on her way to the car, the guy tripped because he was drunk. And she paid attention to this. So when she got in the car, some things began to happen. He was just laughing and act, acting stupid. And he reached out and he put her arm on her. Amen. And she said, pay attention to the road. Pay attention to the road. He just ignored her. And all of a sudden, this man who was drunk with an innocent young lady in the car who refused to listen to her parents. She was mad and I want my parents telling me what to do. She kept telling him, man, will you please slow down? But he ignored her and out of nowhere came these flashing lights. 
she was in a car accident head on. And when she woke up, the young woman, when she woke up, learned some new truth. When she woke up, she could not feel her hands. She could not feel her legs. And she laid in the bed and she asked the nurse, she said, listen, how is the gentleman that was driving? He said, well, I want you to know he died. He died. And, and she, the young woman, began to cry profusely. She was broken because of one single act of disobedience. One person is dead. And she began to just feel completely guilty. And so she felt in her body death was approaching her. So I hold in the nurse's hand, she begged the nurse, said, can you do me a favor? Can you just tell my parents I'm sorry? Can you just tell them I love them and I'm sorry? I didn't want to disobey. But unfortunately, in that very breath, she took a last breath. And she died. And a doctor came to us. I noticed that when the young lady asked you to tell her parents, you didn't respond except nodding your head. She said, you're right. I didn't know how to tell her that the couple, that the car they ran into was her parents. One decision can destroy your life. One bad car ride can destroy your life. Ain't about East Eggs. It's about Jesus is here to save if you want to be saved. So say, I don't want no religion. Hey, we're in the same boat. I cannot stand religion. That's why I have relationships. And in relationships, there's trust. And this is why we have to pay attention that you may not like what your parents tell you, children. But they are protecting you. I can't today. I still tell the story. I just couldn't stand my father. Because I'm number nine out of ten. Why are you keeping me? Everybody get to have fun. And you keeping me in the house. And I remember my mother used to say, because we're trying to, so you don't become like your brothers. And they're a little wild. It don't take but one bad decision, brothers and sisters, to destroy your life. One wrong evening with the wrong man can mess you up. One decision with the wrong woman, you could get something you can never get rid of. It's a horrible thing to have a child with a person you can't stand. Horrible. This is where we are today. We're in a messed up world. We're in a bad situation, and we need help. It's not coming from your job, but we need some help. And that's why in 1 Corinthians, the Bible, in chapter 15, the Bible says, Oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, Hades, where is your victory? Because the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus. The, my behavior had to be judged. The point is, God was trying to save me before the judgment came. Did you hear what I just said? Because judgment is coming. My lifestyle, I've got to give account to how I live. God teach me to say I'm sorry quickly. But things don't get better until you get better. Things don't grow until you grow. 
Life don't get more peaceful until you start acting peaceful. So the problem isn't the devil. The problem isn't the man. The problem isn't the light pole. The problem isn't the stop sign. It's me. And I'm an issue, God, that needs some help. And that's why he says, the last death. Amen. Oh, death, no longer have a sting. What does this really mean? I was reading about this particular uh, jellyfish venom, how it comes into the world. It's so deadly, containing toxins that attack the heart, the nervous system, and skin cells. Extremely painful. Another one is like, it's like taking knives and putting it on the bottom of your heel and try to walk in it. And it's so painful because of that venom. And that's what it's like to be in love with a person you can't stand. You're in love with someone you know they don't love you, but you're in love. Because, see, you're in love with the thought of love. You'll never know love until you receive the love from Jesus. That's the love that don't pack the bags when it's a bad day. That's the love that don't look for a separation just because you made a mistake. But he's a merciful God that looked to shed his love on those that will receive it. Why do people reject love, but they love anger, hatred? Why does my skin, my epidermis bother you so much? I talk to this side. Why does my skin color bother you so much? I read just like you do. I study just like you do. I have some of the things you have. Who cares about all that? Who pontificates? Who brags on all that stuff? I had the world, I thought. But my soul was dragging. I mean, really, brother, you have to mess with the children? Really? I mean, I'm not even promoting it by no imagination so if you take this video and try to mess it up just know don't worry about it <laughs> I'm gonna sue you okay so you know how people do some crazy stuff but I'm not promoting this but why you gotta mess with a baby when you can go down there and take twenty dollars she'll rock your world okay some of y'all kind of got what I just said I'm just trying to give you the real world sermon not some kind of bubblegum stuff Make you real happy, go home, I got my clothes, I look real good today. No, you got to understand, we live in a real world where people are really dying. People are suffering. How could all this music all of a sudden come out and all of a sudden when the music came out and promoted, amen, jail cells got full. Y'all just cool. You don't understand there's some connection here. You're profiting both ways. But you're destroying a legacy. You don't want to destroy your legacy. And this is why Jesus says the last death, the last sting, I'm going to take it for it. I'm going to die on Calvary's cross for you. I died for your stupidity. I died for your prejudice. I died for your unforgiveness. I died for your anger. I died for your excuses. Now start living because I died for all of that. Come on, give him a worthy praise. Well, preacher, I ain't never done anything. The Bible says all have sinned and come short. Every one of us tells someone, I'm guilty. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Come on, look at him real serious. Tell someone, I'm guilty. Amen. I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. Come on, listen. Tell him the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I've done some dirt. I mean, amen. I'm, what, what am I talking with? That's not the real. Where the real folks are. I say, I, and they say, God, I've done some trash. Thank you. Amen. I've done some trash. And, and see, can you imagine we have the video? I always say, if you had the video up there and God starts showing what you did last night. What you watch this week, what you were watching, nobody looking around. And amen. If we went on your computer and searched out what you watch, you would say, Oh, praise the Lord. Did you look at that? 
I thought you loved Jesus. Oh, yeah. Now, can I talk a little real right now? Amen. Uh, see, this is what we are. We know we're rotten. We, I don't need you to tell me I'm rotten. I'm telling you, without Jesus, I'm a mess. Without Jesus, I cannot be trusted. Without Jesus, I'm stupid. I'm arrogant and everything and uh, everything below and beneath. But the mercy of God found me when I needed to be saved. The mercy of God showed me kindness and he lifted me up. Hallelujah. And he turned me around and changed and out of nowhere I start preaching and out of nowhere I start praying and out of nowhere I start fasting I didn't know nothing about it I wanted the money I wanted the fame I just wanted to do my business and go home and buy my mom a home and, and go here and buy my ranch but, but God said no son I have a need of you I gotta strip you of everything you trust in order to find the man I'm looking for and that's what God will do he will tell you or find you you are broken if you don't want to acknowledge it you are destitute if you do not want to acknowledge you are in need of love that you've never had before that man cannot love you like Jesus that woman cannot love you like Jesus that man that woman that animal that drug that drinking or whatever it is you into cannot love you like Jesus Jesus went to the cross before you were even born to save you before you even got saved he made a way out for you but you got to receive his love come on give him a praise somebody come on give him a real give him a real shout Hallelujah. That's why God says in conclusion, let your heart not be troubled in John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. Uh, believe in God, believe also in me. That's why he said, because in my house, this is a, rebu a, rabbinic, a rabbinic thing. He said, in my house are many mansions. Amen. He said, listen, uh, and that's when you get married. What he's saying is, he used a story for them. When they get ready to get married, uh, they had to go to the father's house and bring a diary, amen, or bring some some money or something of value and give it to him in exchange for the daughter. And he said, he said, look, now now that we're married, the son would say, now that I took care of that business, uh, he tell the woman, he turned to the woman and said that the, or his, his, the woman he's engaged to, he said, listen, uh, he says, now I'm going to go to my father's house, amen, and fix things up, uh, amen. And when I get it fixed up, uh, I'm coming back for you. Amen. Uh, that teaches us even when we get think about getting a woman and get married. Amen. That I got to get my stuff together before I go get her. I got to have my stuff jacked up. I mean, I don't want jacked up business. I want my stuff decent and in order. And that's why Jesus says, uh, it's coming. I told you. You got the endowment. Amen. Uh, I paid the price uh, to you to be my bride. Y'all didn't hear you. I paid the price for you to be my bride. And so I'm going back to finish what I started. Uh, but don't you be confused. Uh, I am coming back uh, for a church uh, without spot or without wrinkle. I'm coming back for a church. Uh, a bunch of people who was broken, strung out, destitute, prostituting sleeping around doing all kind of stuff I'm coming back for a church uh, people that was messed up uh, but they said yes to me and I got in their life and I begin to change their mind I begin to change their attitude uh, and all of a sudden you cleaned up now God save you you still got to stay on your knees and thank him uh, and say if it had not been for Jesus on my side uh, it was not my retirement account it wasn't my four old 1k it wasn't my investments it wasn't my books it was the mercy of God that found me in a place I couldn't get myself out of but Jesus loved me so much that he died for me that's love love always stands in the front of the line and say I'll pay the price devil the devil thought he had us but Jesus says oh death where's your sting you can't sting this one because this one has been washed in the blood oh come on somebody 
If that's you, you ought to just shout. You ought to praise him. You ought to do something. You ought to clap. You ought to tell the devil, where is your sting? Jesus already paid the price. See, the problem is, brothers and sisters, we have been chasing religion. We don't have a relationship. We don't have a relationship. We don't have a relationship. So what we have is religion. But relationship comes into the bedroom when nobody can see you. Relationship is when you're on the computer and the Holy Ghost say, do you really want to watch that? Should I do all to call? You really don't want to look at that? It's going to stir something up. It's going to boil the juices. And once it gets you to that point, you're going to need fulfillment. Y'all know what I just said, don't you? You're going to need the tension release that you build up in that 15 minutes of visually seeing something. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection. You need new life now. I am the resurrection, Jesus said. Are y'all listening? Shh. I'm the resurrection. And I have come to save you before this world go crazy. Now, you can reject me. You can say you have no need of me. But when all hell break loose, I want you to man up and deal with what you accepted to deal with. Now, don't come begging and asking for my help now when you had a chance. When you had a chance. That's why he said, harden not your heart. People got hard hearts. But Jesus says to us, I come to save that which was lost. So maybe you just say, God, I just want someone to pray with me about some things in my life. You don't need anyone to come with you. But if that's what you need, then do it. But the decision is on you. The decision is on you. Do you want peace? Or do you want love? How is it that all those children never in the history that I know of in this ministry, I've seen that many kids get baptized in that fast of a time frame. I've never seen that before. Have you? I, I've never seen it. Have you, Val? You've seen it before? I've never seen that many children. How is it that children can say yes so easy? It's because our mind is all cluttered. It's all cluttered. How is it, I guess, people can call me on the phone in the, in the office and ask me, the church, we, I need money for this. You don't even know my middle initial. But you want something. You see, the church don't really care, really? Really? How do you know that? Do you know if we help anyone go to college? Nope. Do you even know we ever helped anybody in their life? Nope. Where were you when I went to the prison? Where were you when I went to the hospital, the person dying on the bed? Where were you when this all about to be lost and I had to stand here and keep on praying for the miracle of God? Because when you start going up, it seems like everybody wants something. The only thing you really need is Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus in your life. 
And so when all these kids can humble themselves, when all these kids can humble themselves, I want you to search your heart. Bow your head. I want you to search your heart. I want you to search your heart. Where's Sadie? Where's Sadie? She up. Where's she up? Come here. Come here. If you want prayer, come here. As your head bowed, you say, Lord, I need, I have needs in my heart. I have needs in my heart. Come, come here. Come here. Come here. This walk is up to you. You want some prayer. Come let them pray with you. So I got this sister who's here today. She said, you know, I want to get baptized. Who wants a change in their life? Come here. You're not here for an Easter message. You're here because Jesus is calling people. Come out. Come out before destruction happens. Come out. Come out. Come. Let someone pray with you. Maybe you have an ailment in your body. Come here. Come here. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Nobody wants prayer. Somebody need to have their sins washed away. You're married. Come get prayer for you and your wife. You're married. Come get prayer for you and your wife. Come come here. Couples, come get married. Me, me, come, come get prayer for your marriage. Come get prayer for your marriage. Don't worry about the other couples. You, you and your wife, come. Come get some prayer together. What a beautiful thing it is for a husband and wife to go to prayer together. What a beautiful thing. Come, get some prayer. Come get some prayer. This is tough. This, this world is tough. Come get some prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Come on. Come on, get some prayer. Who else? Come on. I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. You want some prayer? Come on. Come on. Prayer for your, maybe there's an ailment in your body. Maybe the doctor's giving you bad news. Whatever the case may be. Come. 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 Come here. Let's pray for a miracle. Let's pray for a miracle. Nobody needs prayer for a miracle. Come on. Don't wait for the person next to you. Come get prayer for a miracle in your life. Amen. Don't get in the line for material stuff and you ignore. Maybe you've been baptized. You haven't received the Holy Spirit yet. Come here. Come and let someone talk to you about receiving the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come here. Come here. Let's start praying for our families. Come on. Let's pray for our families. Come on. Bring your children and get some prayer for your children. There's all the chaos in this world. Jesus is the only one that can change us. Come on. Out the power of God. Get, bring your child. Grab. Come here, girl. Come here, boy. Amen. We're getting some prayer for you. Save your family by bringing them to Jesus. Save your children by bringing them to Jesus. Don't leave your children out there. That the devil will destroy your house and your children. Bring your house to God. Arosa. Bring your family to God. Amen. The devil don't like families. He hates family. That's why the whole house want to be saved. The whole house want to be saved. We need prayer for the family. We need prayer for our homes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. We pray for the whole. Don't leave your family out there for the devil to destroy them and to discourage them and to try to kill them and, and drugs and all the stuff he's doing. Say, it's not going to happen in my house. I'm going to take charge. It's not going to happen in my house. My house. We're going to pray. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray. We're going to pray the devil out of the family. In the name of Jesus, God. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke infirmity, God. We rebuke cancer, God. We rebuke diseases, God. In the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, God. Save families, God. Save families. We're crying. We see what's on the news. Uh, we see what's out there, God. Somebody pray with me. Somebody pray. God, save families. Save the husband, God. Save the wife. Save the children. Save the grandchildren, God. Save God. Hey, God. We need the Holy Ghost, God. Father, we need the Holy Spirit. Our spirit is not working, God. We need the Holy Spirit, God. Father, we need the Holy Spirit. You are changing families. You are changing lives, God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We need real change. We need results in our family, God. Father, we need results. We need results, Father. We need results, God. We need to see results, God. Not just talk about it. We need to see results, God. Where's your daughter? Get prayer. Come with it, yeah. Come with it. Get some prayer with your baby. Amen. Huh? Come on, get, get some. Get, get, bring your that's right. Tell the young man, bring your daughter up. Amen. Hallelujah. Save your children. Save your children. Save your children. Save yourself from this untoward generation. God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the love that was shared at Calvary. Thank you, God. Oh, Thank you for the blood, God, that was shed at Calvary's cross. Father, we give you praise. And Father, we thank you. The name of the Lord Jesus. And as they're praying, you that are watching on social media, they're going to put a message on there on the screen. They're going to put a message on the screen. You know, Tararosha, Mama. Yeah, God, oro, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey, God, hallelujah. Listen, I know you've heard a wonderful word today and God really ministered to you. But the ultimate thing is that God tells us that we need to be born again. And what does that really mean? It means to be born from above. And how do you do that? The first thing you do is repent. You can see that on the screen. Uh, the team has shared it with you on the screen. You can repent. That means just change the way you think. And, you know, you just, it's a process, uh, but it's a start to say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. So repentance. And the Bible also tells us two other things. We have to be baptized. Now, there's many things people talk about baptism, but what you see in the Bible is the Bible teaches us to be baptized. It means to be full immersion in the water. So it's your watery grave, and you get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that's the only name God's given us whereby we must be saved. And the last thing is for you to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit giving you, putting His Spirit inside of you and helping you. Many times we say we can't walk this walk, but it's the Holy Spirit that helps us. And so I, mean, I, I encourage you to consider those three things when it comes to salvation. It's repentance, baptism, full immersion in the water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can see scriptures at the bottom and also being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. As the Spirit, and when you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll notice that you speak in tongues. It's not your native language. It's a different tongue that God gives you. And He gives you that language to show you, first of all, He's inside of you. And thereafter, His Spirit will begin to lead you. So I pray that that help you. Again, I want to say it one more time. It's repentance, baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And after that, you begin to share your testimony. You'll start living this life, but you share your testimony what God has done for you. Listen, this is Bishop Ricky Johnson from Shield of Faith Christian Center in Pasadena. Website is sofpasadena.org. Again, sofpasadena.org. Go there and hit the growth button, and, you know, we've got some material for you to help you grow. Again, I appreciate Thank you for joining us today for a wonderful service, and God bless you in Jesus' name.